All right, guys. Uh, Let me back y'all out just a little bit. I'm uh, working on the 500i here. Our West Coast stuff. Uh, this and this. But in, in addition to that, this is a filter for a 660, or supposedly. And like they say, uh, the, all their filters fit the velocity stack. So I, I should be able to run this one and possibly run my original cover. Uh, this one's got a spring in it to help keep him from collapse. Uh, this one, this one doesn't. It's just more of a foam filter. Uh, and I kind of just like this backing on this one a little better and not just bolting down to the phone, which would probably be all right. And I know I'm taking a little air away from it, you know, in a sense. But anyhow, what I've done is I just, all, all it holds this on is two screws. Uh, they're filter housing, two torch head screws, and you just back it out and it slides right up. Uh, and I haven't run the saw that much, just a few cuts, uh, kind of what you're seeing on the channel. I ain't really cut with any. Uh, you know, as far as tree work or logging. And there is already a boatload of fines in there. You know what I mean? Like, it's just unreal how much the factory air filter lets the uh, <clears throat> fine par particles get around. So I'm trying to... I want to try to get performance out of it, but I'm also not worried so much about the performance as the saw cuts really really good as it is as i am just trying to keep uh keep the uh fine dust part particulates out of the uh the solder body or whatever carburetor solder body however you want to say it and you should be able to just use a factory bolt, you can. Or, excuse me, screws, torch head screws. I'm gonna wipe that down real good. And then I'm just gonna take this and uh, line it up, kinda get them started. Uh, these went terribly tight on the 500 I when I took it off. So I'm not gonna tighten them up. Terribly, terribly tight right now but i'm not going to oil it up yet until i get done dry fitting everything and running it you know uh, my lights i'm having light problems here my lights are fixing to go out i think so anyway this is really thick up in here it's thick to probably right it right right to here you know it's got it it's got probably a good inch of foam there. Whereas this one's just got a hard backing. So by the time you take that inch of foam, you're not, you're not really losing any filter. I mean, just a little bit here, just a little bit, whatever would filter through this, but, and this side, but it's so thick, like it's solid foam. So really you're not losing that much. So if you don't like the green filter, you can order, uh, which I went to Redbeard Saws with to get this because West Coast Saw was out of stock in these uh, velocity stacks and filter kits. I think Walker Saw Shop has them in stock or they did the last time I looked. But the reason why I got this, this one is because I like the black. I think it looks better. It's got a spring in it and uh, I was hoping it would be just a tad smidge shorter, but it, it's not going to be. So. Okay guys, you'll have to excuse the lighting. My my main light went out. <clears throat> I've got to get it replaced, so I'm halfway stuck in the dark. So okay, what I've got going on is uh, I'm putting this uh, velocity stack and the 660 air filter on this 500i. Uh, of course it came with this one. Well, I opted not to go with that. But in return, I didn't want to run my saw with just a velocity stack and all these wires exposed and everything, which it probably wouldn't hurt. 
but just limbs hang on them, get in there or whatever, clean that brush and whatnot. So what I done was uh, I've cut a hole in this back cover, which I have an extra one. I wouldn't go cutting on parts if you don't have extras or uh, can't live without it for a while, which uh, th this air filter cover was pretty, you know, it was readily available or whatever, however you say it. Uh, and it wasn't just terribly a lot of money. 30 bucks at a saw again, and it's in the steel wrapper, so it's OEM steel, but it ain't died. So, but I got that. What I did was I took that plastic piece that uh, your regular air filter hooks onto, and I cut this out of the center of it. Okay. Set it on there, and it, it worked pretty good, which it wouldn't come all the way off because uh, they're. You know the hole smaller than the air filter but it, it could do this well this air filter housing thing clip it it when you take them two screws out and go to pull it off you kind of kind of pick up and slide out because it locks in down here okay so i got to thinking well i'll just glue that somehow or another and i thought nah, i don't want to glue it i want to be able to get back into it if I ever want to, and it's just plastic. So, uh, what I done was got in my Husqvarna screw kit that you get from Holesforma, and I found me a little uh, coarse threaded screw, kind of like what you'd hold a, a bar plate on with or whatever, you know. And uh, I drilled a hole through this main housing and through this other piece, and just screwed it in here with this black screw. That black screw is not typically uh it's not the uh, factory i guess is what i'm trying to say so that's what i did and it's up a little bit but you know my hole might have walked a little bit on me or whatever but when i get the cover on get everything locked down i think it'll be for the most part all right and if a person wanted to they could drill that out and put a bolt of nut and i might be able to loosen that up just a smidgen and get it to sit a little flatter but i'm not just terribly terribly concerned with that part about it uh. But, and it's plastic, so it ain't just no great big thing. And I'm not going to over tighten it because I want to strip it out. Because, like I say, it's just, uh, it's just here. And plus, if you get to tighten it too tight, it, it'll swell that, suck that in a little too much, you know. And I don't figure it's going to jar loose just terribly loose. Then you get this cover. And I went along it quite a bit. I actually took off more on the top than what I originally intended to. And it slides on just like that. So this was the gap that I was telling you about. That'll all be open. And now I've got this covered. I do have a little more of a gap at the top than I, I really wanted. It's a little tighter on the bottom. Because when I done the marking, I just centered it up on the put this in the center of that cover which was wrong because the trajectory is off and what i may end up doing is uh getting me a little i don't know piece of black rubber or something and sticking it to here making me like a little flat kind of like what they've got right here to keep the biggest part of dust from going down in in the saw but you still get dust in there. I mean, that's just part of the saw. You'll have to blow it out, clean this off. Uh, but everything works like it should. I will tell you, when you drill this screw, or drill this hole for the screw, you want to go up high because there is a wire that runs through that right there. 
And I haven't even started the saw to make sure it starts. But there is a wire that runs through there. If you go too low, which I'm hoping I did not. If you go too low, then you will cut into those screws. And you're probably gonna be mad at yourself. I don't know that for a fact, but I would just about bet it. Because, you know, you're gonna have to get another wire harness if you can even get one. I don't know that either. I know some parts are hard to find nowadays. So I got that took care of. Now all I gotta do is figure out what or how I'm gonna keep this cover here attached. And I don't know that. I haven't oiled the filter yet. I'm gonna oil it when I figure out what I'm gonna do. When I get it all done, it's gonna look like this right here. Instead of just having a big long filter. It took me a little time. And yeah, I've hacked on some parts, but you know, it's just like a truck or anything. When you go to customizing stuff, uh, You got to spend a little money and sometimes you make mistakes and uh, you got to replace some stuff which I everything so far has went really really well on this but you know uh, to go fast and look cool sometimes you got to sacrifice some uh, comfort and uh, things like that kind of like on a vehicle you know uh. okay so I got this far on the 500i uh, I went a hort went a hort Went ahead and ordered me a uh, air filter base is what they're called, not an intake. I didn't know the proper name, uh, but that's what this piece is that I cut up. <clears throat> and you got the screw through at the air filter base. So this cover and the air filter base runs you roughly about 35 bucks a piece at saw again you can get on saw again and order it so i went ahead and ordered me an air filter base and i got that back that cover that i've already showed y'all uh just in case uh i'm gonna get the saw ported uh sooner than later so when i when i send it to get ported i'm gonna put uh put the factory stuff back on it way well, as far as uh Well, probably the cover and all that. So it don't get, nothing gets messed up in shipping is what I'm getting at. And whoever builds it don't have to figure out what kind of uh, half-assed mess that I've got here, which is really not a mess. It really works good. It's no different than, uh, I've got one screw holding the base instead of the two and the actual filter housing, which is in the center, which ain't quite as good as what it, uh was you know factory but it's holding it on and like say these slide in so i mean i'm not that far away uh, to me it's still better than just running just the the velocity stack and the uh filter straight leaving all the wires and everything exposed uh for the elements not so much rain because i don't leave my saws out in the rain but just you know when you're cutting and when you're falling big timber it's not that uh, bad especially in the forest because you don't have a lot of undergrowth but if you're falling out in the field and you got or falling around some scrubby brush or whatever you know limbs hanging not that it's that big of a deal but i still like the whole concept of being able to keep this cover keep my base on there to fill in all these gaps where sawdust is not just all over this all the time uh which it still probably will be but it just looks more complete. It don't look like a, kind of like running a car with the hood off of it to me. This is the piece I'm talking about and there's the wire. So right up here is where I got my screw. All right, I'm bringing y'all back. I figured out what I'm gonna do. Uh, and I think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna have to wait till I get them. The black zip ties. But I'm gonna get, what I'm gonna do is uh, I've drilled two holes here and I put my cover on and I marked where these vents were, okay? And I did the same on the other side. So I slid it on, 
like that goes. You see that hole there? And I can see this hole here. So what I'm gonna do is where I've got a gap here, I'm gonna run a zip tie and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this a little better at some uh, certain time if I can come up with something or make some kind of something other or find something that'll kind of work what I'm gonna do. I'd like to give me some wire snap, uh, kind of like pin snaps, but you know, it's gonna have to be a little thinner wire. And or I could use wire, but I think it just would look a little worse. I'm figuring if I get a black zip tie and stick them in, you know, they had to be pretty long, but the thin one is not nothing just great big. It ain't gonna be nothing crazy. Uh, stick them in and bend some out, bend some out where I can grab a hold of it after I get the cover on and let them run. I may have some, some, some somewhere, I'll just have to look. Let them run through these two sides, lock them, and then zip, zip it down there. And that'll hold the cover on. So, you know, it'll be uh, about as best as what one man can get it. That man being me, <laughs> and uh, that's what we'll do. I was gonna do something with this hole, but I don't think I'm going to. I just, uh, you know, if it becomes a problem now that I've already kept one cover up and know what I'm working with, what I, what I need to go off of. And I'll tell you if you if you do it, well, the best way what I think would be to do it. All right, see where I'm at. I've got a little bit of gap there. So, there was a brand new cover being all that shit. I just dropped it. So where I'm at, is about right in here, about right in here somewhere. So I would come off this, off this bend right here right before that orange starts to roll down to the white. I'd come up about an eighth of an inch, make a mark, and then measure this filter, come up to that, make a mark. If you mark that, or I would probably take this filter, get my base mark right there, and get the center of that, just take that filter and set it there, and then draw around the filter. And if you take a, you know, uh, a sharpie and hold it and then go to the outside of the line that would give you about a perfect uh yeah i don't know not like probably three thirty seconds around it or something a little more than a 16th but not quite an eighth is what i'm getting at so that'd be what three thirty seconds so yeah that, that's what i would do like say i'm not uh smartest i got i got pretty close for what i had going on i tried to mock it up the best i could but unfortunately when you put this air filter on you can't slide this on well enough to tell how it's going to be that you just start somewhere and go which if that was worse any worse than what it is i would uh mm, probably redo it and just you know call it chalk it up as a loss but it isn't terrible and later on if it bothers me or anything that I may just uh, put the uh, put the put the I may cut that other camera up alright guys sorry the video's been so scattered and sorry it's jumpy and the editing ain't great uh, I've been just kind of figuring this out as I was going and didn't want to bore y'all with all the stuff I was having to figure out so but anyway uh, I put this screw in here and uh, I decided to go ahead and drill two holes one in this base air filter base and one in the uh, pillar for the intake and all that you got to be careful that you don't hit no wires but I just ran a zip tie to hold it and now this is really secure and so I've got my zip ties I've got the two holes drilled and, and that's how I'm going to hold this cover on which, like I say, this ain't the best, the best way to go about it, I'm sure. And uh, 
I'm sure there's better ways, but here's the deal. I don't want to run, <clears throat> I want to run the air filter. I don't like the max airflow because the paint, the plastics don't match. And, uh, the, uh, covers bigger it don't fit exactly right and i wanted to run this west coast filter style filter and i could even run the the green uni filter if this 660 filter don't work out for some reason or it's not not letting enough air get in i can put that uni filter on it's the same deal as this uh which i've got the velocity stack on or whatever you call it i think it's a velocity stack is what they call it uh the proper terms uh but anyhow uh I can run that if I need be, but I, honestly, what, the way that filter set up and this filter set up, I don't think you're losing that much filtration, just a little, about one inch. But in that last one inch of the green filter, like I say, it's just solid foam where this one just has a back plate. So, and I'm guessing that these are the same micron filters. I'm, you know, I'm not for sure. What I'm getting at is if it's good enough for the 660, uh, surely, gosh, it'll be good enough for the the uh, 500i. But to me, this beats running one of these stack filters with without the cover because, the, and there may be somebody else out there doing it like this, but the only way I've seen is, uh, the only way I've seen it is like this. So, you know, uh, like I say, I'm not saying my way is the best by no means, but I'll, you know, I gotta make sure I got these right. So I'd rather run it like this than with, and, and be able to keep my factory cover. And until I figure out a way to get this attached better, I don't wanna run screws in this because one reason, you go to running screws and I'm afraid it's gonna be a problem in the long run. You're, you're gonna end up having, you're gonna end up having screws wear out after time after time after taking them loose. All right, so I walled them holes out a little bit so you could flip the zip ties if you was to put them in wrong. I still don't know that you're gonna be able to. But anyway, uh, let me see what I'm doing. And again, I put this son of a bitch right here inside out. Wire snips and uh, trim that off. A little better than that. So, oh, I just threw them away. It's full of hanging all my crap. Get my mind on crap. Uh, threw them away. So, in the end, uh, this is what the zip ties look like. Like, say, I'd like to get me some wire snaps of some sort, black, uh, kind of like a clip pin. Just snap, unsnap it, and slide it, you know, hook it somehow or something but uh for now i've got her where she's ready to go still got plenty of room and uh that's how you can run a stack filter and keep your uh cover on a 500i and you this ain't patent pending so i guess you can improve it as improve it as you need to or uh come up with a better idea and if you do uh holler at me and let me know we'll see y'all on the next one